God. Don't join folk today in allowing children to do their own thing. And then you join in with them with their nonsense. I don't care what stage of life they are at. You continue offering sacrifices on their behalf. Telling them what God requires. Showing them what God requires. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's such a joy to see all of you today and to be in the house of the Lord, huh? Huh? Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord today? Give him praise. Hey. Not like that. He is God, huh? Huh? You should be screaming out aloud because he is God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Who Jesus is. Come on now, be happy. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Who Jesus is. Tell them who he is. He's the lily of the valley. He's the bright and morning star. the fairest of 10,000. He's the fairest of 10,000. That's why everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Oh, let's practice that tune for the week. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Oh, Jesus is. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Who Jesus is. Tell them who he is. He's the lily of the vine. The bright and morning star. The bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand. He's the fairest of ten thousand. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Last time, everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Who Jesus is. Everybody ought to know. 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 Hallelujah. Who Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There is something about that name. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus. Like the fragrance, like the fragrance after the rain, after the rain. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Let all heaven and earth proclaim all heaven. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away. 
But there's something. But there's something about that. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away. But there's something about But there's something 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 about but there's something about that name give the Lord a round of applause there is truly something about that name Jesus every time you call that name Jesus demons flee every time you call that name Jesus you should get a little spur every time you call that name Jesus you should get a little lift that name Jesus call his name what's his name Jesus. what's his name Jesus. what's his name Jesus. who woke you up this morning who started you on your way? Jesus. Who put food on your table? Jesus. Clothes on your back? Jesus. Shoes on your feet? Jesus. That name is? Jesus. One more time. Jesus. I can't hear you. Jesus. I can't hear you. Jesus. I can't hear you. Jesus. That name, Jesus. There's something about that name. Can't stop calling that name. Every time I call that name, Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Welcome and greetings to you, brothers and sisters. We are at Bethel Baptist Church, the oldest of the Baptist churches in the Bahamas. And we say, bless the Lord for this third Sunday in the month of November, the 15th, the middle of the month. God has been good to us. This has been a very non-typical year but no year is really typical and every day is a unique opportunity to bless the Lord to thank him for life to praise him for his goodness and to live our truth as we submit to his holy will our pastor is Reverend Timothy Stewart and we invite you to share this worship experience with us as you turn with us in your Bibles. I am reading from the King James Version, the Old Testament, the book of Psalms, and we will together read Psalm 30. This is a unique Psalm because it is a Thanksgiving Psalm. David is thanking God for delivering him from death. Psalm 30, all 12 verses. I will read the first, you the second, and so forth. But for those who are watching us via the Zoom platform, I will read every verse. So I invite you to keep that in mind. Psalm 30. I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks of his holiness. For his anger endureth but for a moment, in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And in my prosperity I said, I shall never be moved. Lord, by thy favor thou hast made my mountain to stand strong. Thou didst hide thy face 
and I was troubled. I cried to thee, O Lord, and unto thee. What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Shall the dust praise thee? Shall it declare thy truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be thou my helper. Thou hast turned me from my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness together to the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We, the people of Bethel Baptist Church, shall rejoice and shall be glad in this day.
in times like these we need a savior in times like these we need an anchor our father and our God help us today to be very sure that our anchor holds and that it grips the solid rock. Oh, we declare today, Heavenly Father, that that rock, that rock is Jesus. Yes, he is the one. That rock is Jesus. He is the only one. For he is the rock. That provides joy in time of sorrow. He is a rock that provides healing for our sick bodies. He is a rock that is our provider. He is a rock that is our sustainer. He is a rock that is our comfort. Glory be to God. He is a rock. He's the rock of ages. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So we've come today, Heavenly Father. Another time to praise you. Another time to glorify your name. Another time to exalt you. To bless the name of Jesus. Oh, how sweet the name of Jesus. And air believers there heals our sorrows, soothes our sorrows, heals our wounds, and it drives away our fears. So we come with confidence today, knowing that we have assembled those of us in the sanctuary, those of us joining by way of live streaming. We have assembled today in the presence of this awesome God. This mighty God who is worthy of all praise, all honor, and all glory. This God who is majestic in all his ways. Hallelujah. This God whom there is no turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassion. They fail not as thou hast been, thou forever will be great, great, great is your faithfulness, oh God. Great is your faithfulness. God, you're faithful to us. You woke us up early this morning, Father. Touched us with your finger of love. Allowed your breath of life. Once again, to breeze through these vessels of clay. So we come with grateful hearts. Come with thankful hearts today. With praise on our lips. To honor you. To adore you. To magnify your name. As we look around our world today, a world that is in peril. A world that is in chaos, a world that is in ruin, a world that is seeking and searching for truth, a world that is looking for hope that can only be found in you. So we lift you up today, Heavenly Father, in this service. We offer you to the world today, O oh God. For you are the light of the world, a world that is in darkness. So God, we bless you once again. Thank you for what you will do in our midst today, Holy Spirit. Because we know that your presence is already here. So we invite you to have your way. We are grateful for again to be able 
to assemble in the house of God. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your mercies. Morning by morning, new mercy you allow us to see. Oh, we are so grateful, Father. Now, Lord, we lift up the one who will break the bread of life today. Your humble servant in the person of Pastor Timothy Stewart. Anoint him afresh even now, Father. That as he stands before the sacred desk today, your people will hear from heaven today, O oh God. As he submits his vessel to be used of you and by you for your honor and for your glory. So use them today, Father. In a mighty way. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that your word shall go forth. It shall transform lives today. Sick bodies that shall be healed. Broken relationships shall be mended. Father. Thank you, O oh God. That your word shall not return void to you. But as you say, it shall accomplish all that you sent it to do. So again, we thank you. Thank you for this time. Thank you again for this opportunity. We give you the honor. God, we give you all the glory. Father, we give you all the praise. For it belongs to you. Help us, Holy Spirit, to worship today in spirit and in truth. For it is the only worship that you shall receive. May our worship today ascend your throne on high as a sweet smelling savor, a sweet smelling aroma. God, that you would be pleased with our worship. That heaven will come down and glory will fill our souls today. Is our humble prayer. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. In the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen.
church shall praise the Lord. The church shall hallelujah. This time we welcome him to this worship experience. Some of our members who we call our senior saints, they have reached an age of 65 and because of COVID-19 social distancing, they are not physically in the church sanctuary, but they are worshiping and having fellowship on the Zoom platform nonetheless. Among those who are witnessing this celebration of worship to our God are Olive Forbes, Elaine Wells, Deaconess Nellie Strawn, Judy Roberts, and her mother, Esther Ramey. We say God bless you as you experience the presence of God, although you have not been physically with us for the last eight months. And on behalf of Pastor Stewart and the membership, we say enjoy this experience. This morning we read for our sermonic text, our theme for the year. Theme scripture. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. And our theme, scripture, our theme for the year, in pursuit of wholeness, maximizing our potential. can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. In pursuit of wholeness, maximizing our potential. Could it be that during this ministry year that God has identified some ways that we can improve, maximize our physical being more than we have done in 2019. 
Could it be that there are some of us who still do not pay enough attention to our physical nature? We're still not concerned about what we eat and how much. We, we, we're still not too concerned about medical attention. And this year, it just may be that the Holy Spirit is leading us to be more impactful physically. So that we can do more as a result of being physically able and well. Or could it be that the Holy Spirit is leading us to be more emotionally strengthened and fortified? Could it be that the Holy Spirit is leading us not to allow 2019 factors to stress us out so much? The same things we allow to cause us to doubt God and to inhibit our own quest and pursuit of wholeness and maximizing all that God has provided for us. Could it, just could it be that spiritually we are called upon to focus more on what God wants to accomplish through us more than what we are trying to accomplish for God? Could it be that God wants us to maximize even in the way we pursue our livelihoods? Could it be that this year God is asking us through conditions to expand our own ability to learn some new skills. We don't, could it be that God is pressing us and leading us and directing us to maximize our ability? maximize all that he has entrusted to us so that we can be of greater witness for him. And we indicated that all of this is possible based on the culture that we allow to govern our behavior, our actions, our thoughts. And this culture is found in verse 8. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely 
and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing. I, I believe too many of us want to maximize our potential. But too often we revert to the same way of doing things, the same mindset, the, the same habits, the same norms, the same way of thinking. And what the scripture is saying is that we're going to have to conform more to this culture that which is right, true, honorable, admirable, that which is excellent. We're going to have to conform more and more. And allow that to impact family life and church life and work life and every facet of our being. And so today, we want to just emphasize for us the beginning point, and that is in the area, the vital area, the critical area of worship critical area of worship. I remember us saying that if we get that wrong, then everything else will be out of sync. And, and, and for that, I want to just introduce some unusual passages just to stretch us this morning. We're going to stretch you this morning a little. Spiritually. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. And I will cause hostility between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. And so first, As we think of the experience of worship, we are appreciating now that worship always encompasses sacrifice. Lord, help us today. That there is no way to worship without sacrifice. We could appreciate, in this case, we have announce ahead of time one who would be sacrificed. One who, in order to fulfill the worship requirements of God, must die. 
in order that God's plan of redemption could be put in existence. The serpent's head must be bruised. Not only that, but that of the Christ child heal must be bruised. And so, now if so, if worship requires God, the second person of the Godhead, the Word, to be sacrificed, there are one or two features of that sacrifice that I only want to introduce this morning, but it will take the whole message to elaborate on it. And that means that, number one, if God himself, the second person of the Godhead, must be sacrificed, Every feature of human existence has to deal with the experience of suffering. Yes, Jesus would be sacrificed. But we too will experience the fallout because of our sin and experience suffering. I'm talking about daily life. We, we handle sacrifice and, and suffering as if it's some, something out there in the, that ain't supposed to. No, suffering is part of the natural order. That's part, that's a natural part of the fallout. Because of what must be sacrificed. And, and, and the strange thing about it is, is that we prepare for everything in life but suffering. That's the one thing we just try to keep us far out of our mind. That's possible. And that's the one thing you're guaranteed in life is suffering. He said, he said, yeah, not just the serpent, that he has suffered too, but Eve, you, 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 you got to suffer, Eve. Adam? Some suffering, my brother? Yes. And, and not just suffering temporarily. You're going to suffer until you go back to the dust because dust thou art. Dust thou art. And that's the second feature of sacrifice. It always requires death. And that's the second thing that we always keep as far from our thoughts as possible. And the one thing we must experience as a fallout, as a result of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. We could not offer ourselves as a sacrifice. But because he offers himself as a sacrifice, we must suffer and we must die. It's part of the human 
experience. And this is what, and all because this is what God requires because of our sins. This is what God requires. This is why no sin can go, ever go unpunished because of the sacrifice was so great, so costly. It required God himself to come down. The second feature of this worship experience, this worship experience, we go to the book of Job. Let's go to the book of Job, chapter 1. And if we go to verse 4, it says, Job's sons would take turns preparing feasts. In, the house, in their houses. And they would also invite their three sisters to celebrate with them. When these celebrations ended, sometimes after several days, Job would purify his children. He would get up early in the morning and offer a burnt offering for each one of them. For Job said to himself, perhaps my children have sinned and have cursed God in their hearts. And this was Job's regular practice. And so we see Worship from the perspective of a parent, of a godly parent. In other words, your children never get to the point, leave them alone to themselves. <laughs> These children who Job had had their own houses. They went home. They went under Job's parental authority. They were on their own. But the Bible says that Job offered a burnt sacrifice. Talking about worship now. What worship requires. For each one of his children. And, and he even ensured sure they did nothing wrong. He said just maybe. Just, just in case. Cele their celebrating may have gone a little bit too Just in case they drank a little too much <laughs> and curse God our. He offers a sacrifice on their behalf. Let me tell you something. You do not join the people of God. Don't join folk today in allowing children to do their own thing. And then you join in with them with their nonsense. I don't care what stage of life they are at. You continue offering sacrifices on their behalf. Telling them what God requires. Showing them what God requires. I 
don't care how things change. I don't care what it changed to. Keep the sacrifice going. Keep the sacrifice. And then finally, for this morning's message, we go to Romans chapter 12. Verse 1. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living, being your bodies, let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Now we want to concentrate that not only must God himself be sacrificed, <laughs> not only should we offer sacrifice on behalf of our children, but now we must Offer ourselves living sacrifices. In other words, no one worships authentically without having been sacrificed. No one. And when you sacrifice to God, that means that you belong to God. And for God's use only. That means only God can influence you and direct you. You know, buddy, nobody else can influence and direct you because you are already sacrificed to God. Your, your thoughts, even in your own, you, all, you, you sacrifice to God. When you are on the altar, your pocketbook ain't yours. And if you sacrifice, you ain't got nothing. It's all sacrifice. And decide what you're going to put down and what you ain't got. Not, you ain't sacrificed then. You, you lodging and judge. <laughs> you running things. <laughs> but if you sack, if you on the altar, if you sacrifice, Nevertheless, not my will, <laughs> but thy will be done. It says holy, present it holy to God, completely, exclusively to God. That means that 
as long as you are on the altar, you ain't got no say. You ain't got no say. God, God has all the say while you're on the altar. Because you're on his altar. And so, it's his will that must be done. And so we take these last few minutes just to close, conclude by saying turn to Romans chapter 12 and we're going to Look at verse 6. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things. Well, so if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. In other words, now he is saying that we have been given different gifts by God. But guess what? If we are on the altar sacrificed, those gifts are too. That means we can never use the gifts for our use other than God's if we are sacrificed, if we are on the altar. And so it doesn't matter. It can be the gift of prophecy in verse 6. The gift could be serving others. A few times I went into the kitchen and once a number of times was kind of a little concerned. Because you got to be careful how you serve people. You, you, you got to serve people while you're on the altar, while you sacrifice. <laughs> you, can't, you can't serve them the way you want to serve them. You have to serve people the way that God dictates that you serve them as a result of your yielding to God. If your gift is that of teaching, what the gift is, I don't care what the gift is, nor where the gift is, that gift must be with you on the altar. <laughs> for the honor and for the glory of God. And honor and glory of God exclusively. I give him for us. For our use, no, for our benefit. Present your bodies first. Now the gifts. Because that is a reasonable service. And why, why is that so? Why? That is so because of what Jesus has done. Of, not, not what Jesus, of all Jesus has done. Of all Jesus has done for us. He says, Give it all to Jesus so he can use it all for his honor and for his glory. God bless you. We thank God for the message today. 
certainly a clarion call has gone out today to each and every one of us who would have heard the word of the gospel of Jesus Christ we have been challenged to do an introspection to examine ourselves and to ask ourselves whether we are in fact maximizing our potential have we submitted, have we yielded completely to the authority of the Holy Spirit and is allowing him to use us however he chooses in whatever way he chooses are we maximizing our potential and then we were given a sobering reminder that worship requires sacrifice. It requires sacrifice. And that we are to present our bodies a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God. We were reminded that our giftings are not ours. They are to be used for the honor and the glory of God. And so I have to believe, Pastor, that when we find Christians and believers using these giftings that are not being orchestrated by the Holy Spirit, it can only be because you've crawled off the altar. You've crawled off the altar. You have to remain on the altar. Living sacrifices. Holy and acceptable unto God. And so you receive the gospel in its fullness today. So you're being challenged today. Those of us here in the sanctuary, those of us joining by way of live streaming. And the first question that is being asked is, have you in the first instance come into a relationship with Jesus Christ? And so we want to in the first instance extend the invitation that if there is one today under the sound of my voice, whether in the sanctuary, whether tuning in by way of live streaming. You've heard this message today. You've heard the gospel. And it's for you to examine yourself. And if you know that you are yet out of the ark of safety, today is a good day. Right now is a good time for you to surrender your life to Jesus Christ so that you can get in right position to be able to use your giftings and your talents for the honor and glory of God. So we want to lead you in a prayer right now for that one who is out of the ark of safety. We just ask you to believe in your heart as you repeat this word, these words with us. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I come today confessing my sins that I am a sinner in need of a sin. I've heard your word today. And I believe, oh God, your word, wherein it says that if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead, 
I am saved. So I confess today the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe today that God, you have raised him from the dead. I accept your gift of salvation. And I thank you right now for coming into my life and becoming the Lord and Master of my life. I promise that from this day forth, I will serve you as my Lord and Savior the rest of my days. I renounce Satan all of his works and I claim you as my Savior in Jesus name Amen Amen let us continue to bow in prayer and as we do so as you continue to examine your life and if you know that there is some area in your life that you have yet to yield completely to the will and purpose of God pray that even now you would take this opportunity to say, Lord, not my will, but yours be done. To say that, Lord, I surrender all to you, that you may be able to use me to the fullest potential for your honor and for your glory. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for your word that has gone forth today. Thank you, O oh God, for the truth of your word. Father, we bless you that even now your word is ministering to us. Even now, O oh God, your word is shaping and molding us into vessels of honor. Even now, O oh God, your word is purging and cleansing us from everything that you find unacceptable in our lives. Wash us afresh, O oh God. Help us, O oh God, to be that vessel that is completely yielded before you. That indeed we may present our bodies living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto you, that you would use for your honor and for your glory. The light of Jesus Christ may be seen in and through us in this dark and dismal world. Thank you again for your man's servant. God, we pray a fresh anointing upon him, a fresh blessing upon him, O oh God, for his obedience today in declaring your word to your people. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that indeed it has not returned void that it is even now accomplishing all that you have purposed. That it is meeting each and every one of us at our point of need. We give you praise, we give you honor, we give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen.
now the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his holy radiance and bless countenance upon you. Grant you his peace. Now and forevermore, let the people of God say, if you'd like to give to this ministry, there are four opportunities for you to give. One, you can give to us through our Royal Bank of Canada account, our main branch account, the account number 2895688, or through our Bank of the Bahamas account. The main branch again, branch code 157, account number 135. 0001435. Otherwise, you can give through an internal transfer if you have a Royal Bank account or a Bank of the Bahamas account. A bank to bank transfer if you have online banking from another institution or over the counter if you happen to be in one of those institutions and would like to make a deposit over the counter. Or if you'd like, you can simply go to our website, Historic Bethel Baptist, and click on our Give button. That will give you an opportunity to give via credit or debit card. And you can specify exactly which ministry you would like to give funds to so that we can direct those funds accordingly. God bless you. Our auxiliaries are still very active during this time. Join us for one of the following Zoom meetings. Children's Church, every Sunday at 11.30 a.m. Band Practice, every Monday and Friday at 7 p.m. Women's Fellowship, every first Monday at 6.30 p.m. Baptismal Classes, every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Dance Ministry, every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Bible Study, every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Help a Sister Out, live talk with Reverend LeVette McFall, every Thursday at 6 p.m. Marriage Ministry, the last Thursday in each month at 7 p.m. Usher Board Meetings, the first Thursday in each month at 8 p.m. Prayer Meeting, every Saturday at 7 a.m. And Men's Fellowship, and the second and fourth Saturdays in each month at 6 p.m. The Benevolence and We Care Ministries of Bethel have embarked upon a mission to provide families of Bethel Baptist Church who are in need of assistance with a food box once per month for at least a year during these challenging times. As a contribution during this 230th year of celebrations, we are asking members and interested persons to feed a family with a small contribution of $50. Funds may be dropped off at the church or donated online at the church's website, www.historicbethelbaptistchurch.org or at RBC or BOB. For more information, please contact Rev. Pat Bethel at 454-6305. We here at Bethel know the immense power of praying for one another. We miss you and we are praying for God's healing for you. In light of the current pandemic, we ask our membership to follow the established church protocols and all other directives issued by the health authorities and the competent authority. This is an effort to mitigate the spread of this deadly virus. All relevant information is posted regularly on Bethel's Church Blast or the various church auxiliary groups in WhatsApp. Let's continue to pray to God who is willing and able to deliver us heal our broken spirits, and heal our land. God bless you all. Children of Bethel are in need of laptops, 
iPads, and tablets for virtual learning. If you are in possession of one of these used devices in good condition and would like to donate it to the church, please contact Sister Lisa Bethel or Sister Sharika Wiley at 323-5000. Warm birthday greetings are extended to all of our members who are celebrating birthdays. May God richly bless and sustain you to live to see many more. Happy birthday, make it a great one. Happy, happy, happy anniversary to all of our members who are celebrating anniversaries. May God continue to richly bless and strengthen your marriage. We would like to express our sincere condolences to those among us who have lost loved ones. We pray that God will grant you his comfort, peace, and strength as you go through this difficult time. We welcome you to join us this Sunday at our 8 a.m. or 11 a.m. worship service as we celebrate our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you are unable to join us in person, tune into our live broadcast at www.historicbethelbaptist.org or you can view our services on Facebook at Bethel Baptist Church or on YouTube at Historic Bethel Baptist Church at a later time.